If you have some sort of major knee injury, like an ACL, LCL, MCL, all the different ligament tears, or like a tendon rupture or a bone break, you should definitely follow the protocol that your physiotherapist has designed for you for your rehab. But if it's just that sort of niggling little pain that starts to make playing a bit of a pain, yeah, no pun intended, but this is the video for you. Usually that little niggling pain is a form of patella tendonitis or tendinopathy, or otherwise known as jumper's knee. And if you have jumper's knee, you've probably watched like hundreds of videos on YouTube, maybe by Knees Over Toes Guy or PJ Performance about how you can heal this jumper's knee. But you're about to get back into the season for your sport or your season's already started and you still got this niggling pain what should you do should you just stop playing completely or is there a way for you to manage this whilst you still play without making it get worse well enter elite smart athletes and the first time i realized that i had a form of patella tendonitis or patella issues was when i was 16 and i'm 27 years old now and over this past like 10 plus years i have started to figure out a system to be able to manage this knee pain so that i can still play especially over the past two years so that's what i want to share with you guys this is not a promise that you're going to be able to heal your knees because there's never a really guaranteed timeline but I do know how to help you manage it throughout the season so that you can still play without making it worse. Another disclaimer I do have to say is that if you do still play, you are just prolonging the full recovery of the tendons because all you're doing is breaking it down each time you go and play your sport. However, it doesn't mean it has to be the end. It doesn't mean you have to go backwards. So the major thing that you have to begin with is that you still have to train the knee and you've got to do this in kind of a systematic way. So first thing is to just make sure you warm it up and easiest way, again, if you watch my videos, you probably watch Knees Over Toes Guys videos and you see he does a lot of backwards walking or backwards sled. This is important because it gets blood flow to the knee. It just essentially just gets the knee working, sends signals to the brain that your knee actually functions and needs nutrients to go to it. And in addition to this, you definitely want to, if you have games, if you play a sport like basketball where you've got a lot of impact with the ground, you need to do warm-ups pre-game specifically for your knee. So you're about to get into a game or into a session and you know you haven't done anything with your knees that day. They're not necessarily too sore, but they're not fully warm either. And if you have this knee pain, you know what I'm talking about. So you want to just kind of just get the knees used to working a little bit. So you can do something like little oscillations in different squat positions before we get into a full range of motion squat. So you just want to bend your knees a little bit, just as far as you can go and just up and down, just bounce, maybe like 30 seconds, right? And then you can go a little bit lower, you know, and again, bounce in that position, like 30 seconds, and then a little bit lower, 30 seconds, until you're all the way at the bottom, 30 seconds. I know it looks sus, it looks sus, but it's just to get it working. And then once you've hit that bottom range, you're just gonna get into a full range of motion squat. Okay, we're not squatting with weights, we're not squatting to be a power lifter, so we don't mind if your heels come up because it's for the knees. Secondly, you wanna make sure that you actually work those muscles around the knee to be strong enough to help with the forces that are gonna go through the tendon eventually. But it's not just your quad that you need to work like. You need all your muscles in your lower body to work synergistically. It's a unit. The stronger the whole lower body is, the stronger the knee is gonna be in the first place. But the important thing when you do train those muscles is that you're not trying to train through pain because you're already getting so many contacts whilst you're in your sport, you're gonna have a level of pain regardless at a base level. You don't want to add to that when you train outside of the games. And as is in the name, jumper's knee tends to be caused from jumping, but you don't want to avoid jumping. So when you're working outside of the games, you kinda wanna be progressing and just doing enough work to lowly stress the knee, stress the tendon, signal to it that Yes, we actually jump, so we need it to work, but not doing too much to actually cause it to tear too far that it can't repair quick enough for the next game. All this like slow speed stuff, it's good to warm up the knees, good to let them know that we're here, but you know, to be able to work at that high speed, we wanna make sure that they're working a bit more elastically as well. So we're gonna add in some jumps as well. So we'll just do what's called a knee dominant jump. Essentially, when you jump normally, or you're trying to jump as quickly as possible, your knees don't really bend as much. But when we do this jump, we're gonna jump with a focus on bending our knees. Now we're not trying to go all the way down, we've already done that full range of motion, but we're going low enough that we activate our knees a little bit. And that way we're starting to get used to the extra forces of jumping. But we can actually start to make this a bit more sport specific as well by making it multi-directional. Side to side, front to back, 
But if you've got enough of a nice, you know, soft landing area, then you can kind of make this a bit of a matrix where you go forwards to the side, back then to the other side. And then the third factor in that training the knee is actually doing some prehab work. So we've spoken about how we're essentially trying to catch up the repair process, the recovery process, as we continue to play in the season and kind of do damage to the tendon. Isometric exercises are, you know, proven to have an analgesic effect. Analgesic just means healing. So if there are exercises that are used to help you heal, why would you not do it? And there are so many different types of isometric exercises you can do that specifically focus on the knee. So the most simple of them, most basic that pretty much everyone, everyone who's probably played a sport anyway or trained a day in their life has done is a wall sit. So yeah, the wall sit, you know, you might only be able to get this far because your knees are a bit sore. So you do this for the first set, go a little bit lower for the second set and then get in parallel for the third set. And also with the wall sit, you can kind of do like a double benefit to work on your posture by working on tucking your tail, making sure you're not in an anterior pelvic tilt. So make sure you have a flat back. So essentially make sure your lower back is touching the wall. You know, you can't slide your hand be between it, no space. Then make sure your shoulder blades are touching it and your head are also touching it. Three points of contact, working on being in a good posture, but also in an athletic position as well. You know, we wanna make sure that we integrate everything like why, why not get two benefits instead of one? You wanna do this the day after the game because I have explained in previous videos about how to organize your schedule between high and low intensity days. So if you've had a game or a practice where you know your knees are feeling a little sore, you know, treat the next day as an active recovery. This is a day where you can hit all of those isometrics. You know, do it multiple times throughout the day so that by the time you hit the next high intensity day, at least you're back to where the knees were before. But as I said, I just use the wall sit as an example. There are so many different exercises you can do. There's like um, pin squats that you can do with the barbell. Um, you can do a Spanish squat, so many different types. I don't believe there's a secret exercise. I think the secret is just doing that isometric hold to focus on the tendon in the first place. But that's all talking about the day after a game. If we're talking about on the game day, what I would suggest doing is using ice and heat. And I know I've said like, you know, typical recovery methods in previous videos anyway, I've said like typical recovery methods that only have acute benefits. Sometimes in season, we want those acute benefits. By acute, I mean short-term benefit. So icing is not going to heal your knee, but it will make you feel better. And what it can do is restrict the blood vessels around your knee. Once you take the ice off and those blood vessels warm up again, then they open up and it will send a rush of blood to the knee. And like I've said previously, when we're warming up the knee, the whole point of it is to send those nutrients to the knee. So icing can actually have that benefit there to a certain extent, but not just icing. One thing I found over the past two years, just testing it out, is if you ice for maybe 10 to 15 minutes max, we don't want to do too much, leave it for about five minutes and then actually use heat on it afterwards for another 10 to 15 minutes it kind of speeds up that process of opening up the blood vessels after you've iced and this is just like anecdotally just my personal experience i do find much better results of ice and heat as a combination rather than just using ice on its own i would suggest getting something like this this is by abco sport i think i've had it for like two three years now um and essentially it's like a little sleeve here and it's got a hot and cold pack inside it. I don't know if you can see here, but yeah, it's a hot cold pack um, with like a gel inside it. And essentially you can keep, I've got four of these packs. I keep two of them in the freezer. Um, I just looked at my freezer like you knew where it was, but I keep two of them in the freezer and then I keep two of them outside. So it means that I always have two on deck to ice like either leg. And then I've got two that are out and warm, ready to use to heat. And to heat them up, you just either put them in the microwave or you can put them in some hot water. And the final bit of my spiel about like what to do for recovery is obviously I've been saying, yeah, we want blood flow to the knee. Well, you know, that blood flow is not gonna help if the right nutrients aren't there. And there are studies to show, and I've spoken about this on my channel before, back like in 2020, I think it was, I made this video, but um, about the benefits of vitamin C and collagen working together. They work well together to be able to heal the tendon because tendons do have a lot of collagen, the same type of proteins that are found in collagen. So 
Essentially, vitamin C helps bind that collagen to the tendon. Um, so the combination of both has been proven in multiple studies to be able to help heal tendons. But a very affordable method of getting this in, which is what I did in my previous video, was, you know, vitamin C. We all know oranges have vitamin C, but there are actually certain like squash juices, like cordials, that um, are enriched with vitamin C. So they have a higher quantity of vitamin C in there. You can use and drink it along with some like jelly, jello, I don't know what you call it, where you're from, but where I'm from we call it jelly jelly has gelatin gelatin can be broken down into collagen and then that can work together to bind but if you watch my videos and you're on this channel you probably also watch pjf performance as well he has his upper echelon nutrition and part of that brand he also has a collagen supplement which has vitamin c in it as well but it doesn't ship worldwide. I think it mainly only ships in America and to certain other countries. It doesn't also ship to where I'm from, otherwise I probably would use that. However, I have done some research and I found on my protein, they have something called The Joint, which is a pill-based um, joint supplement. And within it, it has the same type of collagen as PJ Performance's one does, which is um, something that he marketed his product as like being one of the few supplements in the world that has it. And it was just interesting that this happens to be one of the other supplements that does. Um, and that type of collagen is called UC2 standardized collagen. And it's also got vitamin C in it as well. It has 24 milligrams of vitamin C, which is apparently 30% of your daily recommended intake. And also has 14 milligrams of the collagen. This is not a sponsored video. This is just me like saying what I personally use. now. Have I seen loads of benefit from it? I don't know, it could be a placebo. I have seen my knees get better over the past two years since I've been using it, um, but it could also just be a placebo effect of like, oh, I believe it's working, so you know, maybe it is working. And the reason why I suggest having the whole nutrition thing in the first place is you use this before you do those isometric exercises that I mentioned earlier. So use it about you know 15 to 30 minutes before, then you can do those isometric exercises because then the nutrients will be in your system and then when you do the isometric exercises and you signal to your brain that, okay, yep, we need blood flow there, those nutrients will be in the blood and then that gets through there. So that's the kind of thing that you can do for recovery during the season to help manage your knee pain. So there you go. That is how you can manage your knee pain in season to make sure that you're able to still continue throughout the season, still kind of perform at the highest level you can without making your knees worse. Like that's the important thing. So. You know, it might even make your knees better if you're not doing any of this at all. But at the minimum, you should just at least be able to maintain it before you get into the next off season where you can make more progress to fully healing it using those same methods that you'll see online from a PGF performance or a knees over toes guy. So I hope this helped you. Check out the video about to come up on screen, which is about organizing your in-season training schedule. And until next time, stay blessed.